Hello everyone, welcome to my biography on the man known as the Little Corporal, the Emperor of France. Who else would it be than the legend Napoleon Bonaparte? Enjoy! On this day, August 15th, 252 years ago in 1769, at this house known as the Maison Bonaparte on the island of Corsica, which at the time was recently purchased by France, Napoleon was born Napoleon Bonaparte to Carlo Bonaparte, a lawyer who is quite the Francophile, and Letizia Bonaparte, they had Italian last names before it was French, who was a Corsican noble that beat Napoleon when he misbehaved, which he oddly didn't really care about. He would be sent by his parents to the capital of France, Paris, to attend school. In 1778, at the age of nine, Napoleon arrived in Paris to begin his education. He would attend a regular school and a military school. He proved to be a fantastic student at math and also history, but was harshly bullied for his Corsican accent while speaking French. By the time he finished military school in 1785 at the age of 16, Napoleon was already an officer in the French army's artillery. From here on out, Napoleon would lead in the French army. Napoleon would become power hungry as time progressed. However, his need for power was stopped by the French people as a whole. French society was structured into classes, not unique to French culture, with jobs being awarded to the highest ranked person, not if they were qualified or not. So, Napoleon would sit around doing nothing, until Maximilien Robespierre told Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette to leave France quickly, chop chop. After the French Revolution overthrew France's monarchy and France became a republic, jobs were finally handed out based on experience. And since Napoleon was a highly skilled officer, he rose the ranks quickly. On March 9th, 1796, Napoleon was made commander in chief of the French army. That's quite the jump. After becoming head of France's army, he beat up Austria, which made Italy smug. In November of 1799, Napoleon staged a coup d'etat against the government, establishing a new government known as the Consulate. Napoleon would become one of three consuls who ran France. He would develop the Napoleonic Code, kind of, and sell the totally uninhabited Louisiana Territory to Thomas Jefferson in the U.S. in 1803 and get a lot of money. Back in 1792, France got war declared on itself for ditching its monarchy. Monarchies were seen as an essential part of life back then. As a result, the War of the First Coalition began. It would end in 1797 as a victory for Napoleon, as he gave Austria a good beating in Italy during the Siege of Mantua. In 1798, the War of the Second Coalition commenced, since Napoleon and Austria were still sour from the last war. Austria, who teamed up with Russia, was casually obliterated by Napoleon in a surprise attack at the Battle of Marengo on June 14, 1800. This was because Napoleon crossed the Alps to surprise his enemies. Not like that's been done before in history. During the trek, he had this infamous painting made, although in real life he did the trip on a sickly mule. As a result of the battle, Austria lost the War of the Second Coalition by 1802. Also in 1802, Napoleon was declared first consul for life, guessed by who? Himself. Since he didn't want to share power with two other people. On May 18th, 1803, the UK declared war on France, something it had done for well over 2,000 years by now. This began the War of the Third Coalition and something that would change history forever. The Napoleonic Wars. In 1803, after the UK declared war on Napoleon in France, the UK paid anyone who would fight Napoleon. This brought the attention of Emperor Francis II of the Holy Roman Empire in Austria, as well as Tsar Alexander I of Russia. Together, the trio and Sweden, as the coalition, would fight the War of the Third Coalition, aka the First War of the Napoleonic Wars. On December 2nd, 1805, Napoleon defeated the coalition in the giant Battle of Austerlitz, better known as the Battle of the Three Emperors. As a result, Russia got no real punishment, and Austria was reduced to smithereens by Napoleon for the third time. Also during this time, on May 18th, 1804, Napoleon was declared Emperor of France at his coronation. With this, Francis II officially dissolved the Holy Roman Empire, a nation which existed since Charlemagne founded it a thousand years earlier in 800. In 1806, the coalition thought it had a chance against Napoleon, and thus started the Fourth War of the Coalition. Napoleon blockaded the UK, who traded with her colonies, infuriating Napoleon. By 1807, Napoleon destroyed the coalition in the Siege of Stralsund, making this war his fourth victory in a row. 
After Napoleon divorced his wife, Josephine, because she wouldn't give him an heir, and because she found him highly repulsive. During 1809, Napoleon quickly defeated the coalition for the fifth time in the War of the Fifth Coalition. Yes, that means that Napoleon had defeated Austria five times by now. However, Napoleon wasn't done yet. From June to December of 1812, Napoleon invaded Russia since it wasn't enforcing his blockade, reaching Moscow. However, it got deadly cold and he would lose 450,000 men on the rush escape out of Russia, just as Tsar Alexander hoped. Napoleon would never recover. He even kept a bottle of poison around his neck. In 1813, the UK went to Francis II of Austria and said, Could you please help us kick Napoleon's butt? He's in a vulnerable position. The conversation went like this. No, please, no, please, no, please. We'll pay you a bazillion dollars. Say no more. And so, the War of the Sixth Coalition began. Eventually, Napoleon would be defeated for once at the Battle of Leipzig, aka the Battle of the Nations. It would become the largest battle in European history before World War II. As a result of it, he would be forced to abdicate as emperor and the Bourbons would be reinstalled as the monarchs of France under Louis XVIII. After, Napoleon would be banished to the island of Elba in Italy, zooming there becoming emperor of it. After hearing his fate, Napoleon drank his poison, which didn't kill him since it went out of date, probably giving him, you know. <laughs> However, France was only 100 miles away, and so Napoleon began scheming. On March 15, 1815, Napoleon daringly escaped Elba. By daring escape, I mean holding a long departing ceremony and saying goodbye to everyone on the island. Five days later, on March 20th, Napoleon triumphantly returned to Paris and was met with mixed reaction. Some hated that their former oppressive emperor was back, but others were over the moon because the current king was a joke. Louis XVIII sent guards to arrest Napoleon, however, they couldn't do it. According to legend, they then picked him up and cheered, long live the emperor. Now that Napoleon was back, the rest of Europe was going insane. After becoming emperor again, Napoleon had war declared not on France, but directly on him by three empires, the UK, Russia, and Austria. As a result, the Seventh War of the Coalition began. On June 18, 1815, the coalition met Napoleon in Belgium at what is probably the most famous battle in European history, the Battle of Waterloo. 25,000 people died. After a great showing from the British, who were led by the legendary Duke of Wellington, Napoleon was defeated once and for all. After being captured, he was sent to literally one of the most isolated places in the world, the island of St. Helena. Heck, it is located right here. It was regularly guarded by thousands of people in two ships that always circled the island. And so, Napoleon would die here at the Longwood House from illness or poison 200 years ago this year on May 5th, 1821. He would be buried under the dome of the Hotel des Invalides in Paris. A man of humble origins on a small island, Napoleon will change the course of history forever, no matter it be good or bad. Napoleon Bonaparte will never be forgotten for what he did and accomplished in his life. And with that, that was my biography on Napoleon Bonaparte. Thanks so much for watching. Napoleon is a good example of the saying, all good things must come to an end, although it's up to you to determine if he's good or bad. Personally, I don't like him. My next video will be another biography, this time on a president of the US. And my first biography on someone who isn't dead. That person is Bill Clinton. It will come out on August 19th. Thanks for watching.